Uh, well, t- talking about uh, worst experience ever. Um, <laughs> I know where this is going. Let's talk about your uh, experience at Amazon. You entered at Amazon for four uh, months. For what? Four months. And yeah, that was back in twenty twenty one summer. Let's talk about this because I know you have a. I don't know if it's actually controversial. Maybe it's typical, kind of uh, at this point. But uh, you have a controversial view of, of your of your experience at Amazon. Uh, what was it like? And because because a lot of people say that SDEs at Amazon are actual slaves. So well, I want to know what your well okay. About that. So Isn't that my, more, more towards like the warehouse workers, or is it go like company? It right? is more. It is more like yeah. It is both, but like it originated first for the warehouse workers. Like you see how uh, warehouse workers are working like their ass off, and the second they stop, they're like, no, you can't stop. Just keep working. Just yeah. keep working and all that shit. But no, like in software, and like SDEs at Amazon, it depends on the team you're working with in or because like you're not working with any, I didn't work with anyone. <laughs> so yeah. So if you have a good team, if you have someone who's caring and all that stuff, of course you'll make it and you won't feel as if like, oh, when will this day end or when will, when will my internship end? So that's how I felt. So I had a team that was transitioning from CDO to AWS. CDO is like the non AWS stuff, like anything that's non AWS, like Amazon, Alexa, Prime Video, all that stuff. So didn't they discontinue this? Sorry, but just to touch on this, didn't they discontinue Alexa? Because I know it's like I still they're have losing. My Alexa at home. They're losing. No, no, they discontinued like the updates and the new product line. Mm, why did they do that? I don't think so. It's a losing market for them. No, you think Google Home's Yo, better? Yo, fact check this while it's time story. Well, let's see. I'm pretty sure I'm like, Jamie they here. dropped no, something. Probably. Amazon dropped something, one of those. They dropped this. So yeah, keep, keep, keep going. So yeah, so I was put in a team that was technically not there. They were still transitioning. And my manager was most of the time FK. Like I met my manager. Usually you meet your manager like a couple of months before you start an internship. Uh, my manager, I met her on the first day of my internship, which was... Not okay, because like I didn't even know what team am I on or what, what am I working on. And then uh, after that, they just gave me a project that was not enough for four months. Like uh, I looked at other people's projects, other interns' projects, and they were like relatively simpler, like smaller in terms of like the content and the milestones that you have to cre- uh, complete f- for the project. And there was this thing where everyone was saying, like, if you want to get a return offer, you have to finish the project and all that stuff. So they gave me a project that had failed twice in the past, and it was in a different team scope. So I was working mostly with an engineer from a different team, like as in communicating with him, seeing what works and not. And I had a design doc that was very different than the previous design docs. And one of the leadership principles at Amazon is have a backbone, you know, like you have to Uh, disagree and commit like uh, you have to actually uh, know and back up your claims and your ideas and your designs and I was doing that I was not using the same design as the previous two designs that failed and I kept getting like why are you doing this why are you doing that you should do this you should do that I'm like bro it failed twice and I'm trying to get a return offer you know like (laughs) as an intern that's your first priority so um, I didn't have a good trust battery with my uh, mentor. He was on the team, but he like he didn't have a lot of context about the project. So I had to update every time I do. Uh, like I'm working with the project on someone else. Every time I work on the project, I have to update my ma- my mentor, and you know like argue with him like what's going on and all that stuff. And then it reached a point where I had no more no more time to like actually implement because I was like blocked on many things like permissions for interns. It was a very bad project for an intern. That's what I'm trying to say. So uh, eventually I completed the project and I had it pushed to production and all that stuff. But I was closed minded because like I need to finish like the only priority I had. I need to finish the project. And if I need to like listen to every single point and try to argue about it and try to mm. go back and forth with it, then this project will not end. Well, so, let, let me cut you off. Sorry, but what was uh, what, what was kind of the project? Like, what was uh, uh, what was your task in that project? It was like designing just... like a monitoring tool. It was designing mm-hmm. a monitoring tool for low level database transactions. I don't know if I can go more details into that. Okay. But that was pretty much it, and it had a was lot. Was it of... at least interesting? 
It like, was very interesting. Project? It was very interesting. And okay. I learned a lot, such as like database connection pools, uh, different AWS, uh, different AWS resources, um, a lot of security protocols because AWS is a big company. And it was pretty interesting uh, personally, like the project, but the execution was kind of not what I was expecting. So I did not get a return offer, unfortunately, because um, my trust battery was not okay. Well, I, I totally agree with that because I was trying to finish the project since that was like the first criteria that they assess whether you get a return offer or not. Eventually at the end of my internship, my manager said like, yeah, that is a criteria, but it's not the most important one. If you didn't finish your project and you had more trust, then you would have maybe gotten a return offer. I was like, that's not what they told me. <laughs> from I, I, I agree with them though. Like, I don't think finishing I, the project yeah, is I the totally most agree, thing. but every single person that I spoke with eventually told me like, yeah, like no one ever got a return offer. Well, no one that they know got a return offer if they didn't finish the project. Carl, would you mm. rather, would you rather, would you rather, if you're giving a, a task or a project and a small timeline, would you rather finish it knowing you did not you do your best or you didn't do the most efficient way possible? Or would you stick to your guts, work the way you wanted, the most efficient way, the best way you think is possible, just go over the time limit? Mm, that's a good question. Time management is very important. I get asked this this question in every interview I've done. Right. So this is an interview question that you're gonna you go you are going to get asked. So 100%. what are your thoughts? That's a that's that? a good question. I think uh, I think it depends. I know that's a, a consultant type of answer, but I, I think it really depends on the scenario. Whether if you're doing an internship and from a standpoint of me looking at it where they will only give me a return offer only if I finish the project, then I would make my way into finishing the project without giving in a lot of giving a lot of effort to the details of it. But if, if it's more in a scenario where I'm building my own project and I'll, I tend towards like I tend towards being a perfectionist and everything that I do. So I kind of like to take my time, even though it takes that much to, to like make it perfect yeah. in a way. So I would say it, it really depends. Well, what do you think about this? No, I to yeah, I totally I, agree. I, I like, agree. But the, uh, the issue was if you're given a project that you cannot finish unless you do this. If you knew you cannot finish it, then you should have just stuck to your gut from the beginning. Oh, no. I to like you don't have a choice. They give you a project and that's it. Mm, I feel like you have to also couple that with all the leadership principles that they have. Like you have to yeah. kind of tackle all the leadership principles. For those who don't know, Amazon has this um, list of 13 leadership principles that every employee, every worker has to abide you by. Don't I don't know focus, if that's you a... don't focus on everything uh, as a they, software what engineer. About? Uh, for example, uh, work backwards, customer first. So that's one That's one of the more, most yeah. important things. And yeah. that's what made mm -hmm. Amazon one of the biggest companies on this planet. It's because they value customers, of course, the customer. It's called customer obsession, by the way. So you look at the customer, you see what they want, and you work backwards from there. It's not mm -hmm. like, oh, we want to do this, and then we start building things, and then you get to a point where, no, wait, that's not the most, like, that's not the highest priority for a customer. Yeah. So that's, so customer attention so and even like... Customer-driven wanna... decisions, basically. Yeah, yeah. that's, that's okay. probably the best way to going about any project, yeah. to be honest. Uh, if, if, yeah, if you think about always it. right. Yeah, customer is always right. right? Yeah. So yeah, that's technically it. And uh, oh, and by the way, customers is not always... End users Sometimes, could also be vendors. No, no, I, no. Those are kind of also end users, like uh, people that are not in Shopify uh, and Amazon. Sorry. So, for example, suppose you're working on an internal project. The uh, customer would be your manager or your skip, skip manager or someone in the organization. Oh, okay. That mm. could be your customer, for example, and you try to get from them requirements and all that stuff. So, for example, I had to. I spoke a lot with the person who was who was uh, who created the like the idea of this project, and I had that. Like from my review at the end of my internship, they told me like where I did well and where I did wrong. Um, the customer obsession was nice. Uh, ownership is very important and I got it because like I had to, like you have to own your project. Um, uh, but like the, the earned trust part was not okay for me. So that's, that's what like- kinda... Probably lost trust more than- Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> they, they had- My they mentor had though. Shat on me. Yeah, like he had, he had, you had, I want to say bad luck for the circumstances you were in, but at the same times, you could have played your cards better. 
Yeah, but it's it's all a learning curve. It was your it was a first internship at at a big company yeah. like this. And I'm short tempered. Anyway, well, everyone knows. I, that. that's, th- that's the thing. That's the thing. I, have anger um, issues. I would arguably say that this this would this would be the best path that you would take. Yeah. Because you'd rather not get the return offer being yourself than get the return offer being someone's fucking slave, right? Yeah. Totally. Like you don't you don't want to not be yourself, and then actually you have to change yourself in order to like. Yeah, that's that's not the that's way not to go. That's not called adapting to a company. That's just fucking no, yeah, weak. Yeah. That's mentality. not even sustainable for for you or the company. Yeah, your mental health will deteriorate like deteriorate yeah. very quickly. Also, very this quickly. is not about work. Like this is about life. Because once you have a mindset in something, it's a life mindset. If yeah. you cheat on an exam, you, you cheat. I'm not gonna say like on a girl or anything, but it's it's just about the idea that um, if you change your mentality or your your morals or your ethics or whatever it is for a particular reason, such as the company or basically the way you, you do your things, then this is the way you're living your life. It's not just goes back yeah. to working at a company. Yeah, I, I remember a quote from Steve Jobs that says, um, if, if you want to be a leader, you don't have to make people happy. If you want to make people happy, just sell ice cream. Mm-hmm. It's, 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 <laughs> like, it's like you want to be a leader, just be honest with whatever you're, you're doing, whether it's you being a leader trying to get, get, get some constructive feedback or you being a teachable in a teachable position where you want to be honest with yourself and actually like show off your weaknesses and show off your strength and just kind of you know, be yourself. <laughs> Amazon calls and leadership principles just to make yeah. you a slave. <laughs> <laughs> like, That's, bro, are you, are you excited? I'm very excited for the internship. Oh, I've been shitting. I've been shitting. <laughs> yeah, you mean, yeah, this is you've been shitting, but excited. I'm actually under the table. Very, I'm tell, very, uh, I'm very you. excited. You're going to go you. in and get shit done. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to I'm gonna bring get Shopify slogan to fucking Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck with that. It, depends on, it always depends on your team. That's, that's what that's, I'm going to say. That's true. I feel like luck plays a lot with it. You had a team that was... I don't want to say shitty, but it was in a position where you were moving in. The to another. Yeah, were the bad. circumstance was not like on your side. Um, I hope I will be in a position where like I'm a. I'm, I'm in that's a, the thing I'm with Tang, you know, like there's a high like since there's like a lot of teams. So uh, due to having like a lot of teams, there's going to be like teams that are very good, teams that are very bad. They're not going to all follow one kind of like work ethic if you want. So. It always depends on your team. So, for example, like when I started a startup, the whole co- since it's a small company, um, every team has an effect on the other team. So, if one team is good, then all the teams are going to be like kind of yeah. mm. the same vibe, you yeah. know. So, there's not going to be a big chance of you getting into a like a terrible team. Not terrible team. It's just like something that does not fit your vibe. So, whenever you're interviewing with someone, for example, when I was interviewing with Deliver. Um, I looked at everyone. They were like almost my age, maybe like tops, 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 10 years older. So they were like, I was kind of vibing with the interviewers. I was like talking, we're like having fun. It was a fun interview. I didn't even notice it was an interview, but like at mm. Amazon. These are the best type of interviews. Yeah, yeah those are. true. Uh, yeah. And then the thing is when, when they're talking with you like that. Um, when they interact, when they're interested. Yeah. yeah. The, the best like, interviews are, 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 are more like podcasts where, yeah. you, where you talk, where you have a fucking discussion with the Exactly. With yeah, like a conversation. Yeah. It's not like, like even though uh, behavioral questions, like yeah. instead of just answering like a robot, like, oh, star method, because I read that in the book. Uh, yeah. So the situation is this, 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 the mm. task is this, this and that. No, just fucking let, let him ask you a question, answer in a, in a very like, experience like something that happened with you yeah something yeah, yeah and yeah. like you don't have to stick to a format and just answer yeah, questions as exactly. if they're like on a test or something i know people yeah. who, who who read like they they, they memorize what they're gonna say like it's always good to prepare of course but like memorizing is so like like a, like a professional that. script because they, they, it's like they have, it's like they're talking to chat gpt the, bro. the, the, <laughs> the person exactly. who's interviewing you he's also interviewing 10 other people this is the same day they don't want the same generic like the same same answer. they're looking for someone unique who can fit yeah. their vibe yeah exactly for sure also touching back about the thing about the circumstances and the teams you're dealt like this is also something life's gonna throw you in you're always gonna be in circumstances that you don't want to be in and just being able to make the best out of it either way you know you're not you don't want to be here just, as long as you're here you give it your 150 percent and it's always going to work your way it's on point yeah yeah like mm-hmm. I, I don't want to be in canada that i i got depressed when i first moved to canada still depressed still depressed so but yeah like the idea was i was depressed when i moved to canada and i wasn't giving it my all i was just sitting at home watching tv all day like i literally gave up i'm like okay i can't wait for this three four years to pass so i can dip out of this country 
but then like I had the change in mindset. See, like, okay, I'm here now. Might as well give it my all. I know I'm gonna leave in the future. Since I'm here, let's do 150%. percent. Gonna make and, the best out of it. Yeah. And from there I've been very happy and yeah, growing and yeah. yeah. Awesome. Tissue. 